Yo, yo, welcome to Stargazing, a show about the figures and influencers that surround the superstars in NBA culture. I'm Jovan Buha, NBA reporter at The Athletic. Joining us now is Cassie Athena. Cassie is your favorite NBA player's favorite photographer. She has covered every player and every event imaginable, including recently going to the White House with the Golden State Warriors. We'll get into that. Uh, she created the famous Nick Young meme, as well as her coveted watermark, which every photographer has tried to use now uh, with their own work. Uh, Cassie, my Serbian sestra, how are you doing? Dobro, dobro, I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I'm in Indiana right now. It's a little cold, but uh, happy to be here talking to you. Uh, let, let's let's start with this. Uh, th this is my, my favorite question to start with. Uh, how and when did you fall in love with basketball? Um, I fell in love with basketball, I feel like, in high school. I played volleyball mainly throughout middle school, high school, and then I had some bad injuries, and then I started to try to play basketball, and I really fell in love with not just the sport, but, like, the whole aspect of it, like the teammates, the process, traveling, like the, the friendships that I would build. And then as I got into college, I continued to play – and I feel like since then, it's just taken off. And then what about photography? Because uh, in, in doing research for this, uh, I, I learned that photography was more of your love than basketball. So how, how, did, how did you get into photography? And then how did you decide to merge the two? Uh, from a young age, my dad always had a camera in his hand taking pictures of just myself and my brother. And um, he always would just capture family events and and different things happening. So growing up, I associated taking photos with capturing memories versus like a photo shoot. So um, anytime I could grab one of his cameras and take pictures of my friends or whoever, I would do it. And then as I got into college, um, I kind of just tried to transfer my love of photography with my teammates or the guys team. And so that's really how it started. I would take pictures and video. I did a lot more video early in my career, um, just shooting all of like the players that I knew around me, all the local players and seeing their reactions and seeing how cool it was for them to have like this game documented or this moment documented. Because when I was in high school, college, like we didn't have all the social media stuff like now where, you know, high school players expect content back then it was like really rare to get it. So I really saw the emotional side it brought out of people. And I think a mixture of all of that made me just want to keep going more with it. And then how did your brain tumor in college uh, serve as a restart button for you, as you told ESPN in 2017? Yeah, I mean, it, it restarted my whole life, honestly, because it's like I was in the middle of my junior year, um, you know, like that's right in the middle of a college, you know, degree type thing. And I feel like it just made me have to stop. I didn't have a chance to put it off or I'll do it later. It's like when you have a health issue, it consumes your whole world. So um, when I got it and I was 21 years old and just dealing with the whole process of having surgery and having to recover from surgery, um, I, it just made me realize even more like God has me on this earth for a bigger purpose. And what is that purpose? My purpose is not to just coast through life and see what happens. So I ended up trying to really like reanalyze and refocus and try to find things that I loved and be drawn towards that. And at the time, I was an animation uh, and visual effects major in college, and I liked it, but I was in love with the photography. Um, I just never thought I could make a career of it, but I still always kind of leaned into taking photos. It just kept taking me somewhere. I just didn't know where it was going to take me. So what, what year is that? That's um, 2009, 10? Yeah, right. I, was, I was diagnosed. Yeah, exactly. And two, now I'm like trying to get my years all mixed up. It's been a while. Uh, 2000. In nine, I was diagnosed in February of 2009, and then my surgery was July of 2009. Okay, and then you get your big break in the 2011 lockout. Is that when you would say you really start connecting with players, or, or how, how did you start getting into the NBA space? Because I, I think that, um, you know, I'm sure you're not the only person that wanted to link with NBA players and and start photograph, you know, uh, photographing them, and uh, like how, how do you go from okay, this is the direction I want to go, you know, toward into actually doing it and connecting with players. Yeah. So around the time 
Um, I had my, I was diagnosed with my tumor, like right before it, I had been working as a cashier at a sporting goods store and I saved up, I mean, I was probably making $8 an hour. I saved up every dollar possible, bought my first like intro kind of like professional camera from Costco. And it was like, not even that great. And then after my tumor, I kind of put the camera aside for a while. But then after I was recovering and I kind of got that passion reignited, I started, you know, trying to take pictures again and trying to see what I enjoyed taking pictures of. So I would continue taking pictures. I went to Cal State Northridge. I would continue taking pictures of the basketball guys there because I was friends with them. And then through just different, I think back in the day, it was like a big Laker message board I was a part of. I was like a very big Laker fan. And and somebody on there had mentioned there was a, there was a league called the Drew League and that there was a bunch of NBA players. And so a bunch of us were going to go down there together. And they were like, yeah, let's just meet up there. And, you know, I'd never been down to, it was in Watts. I've never been down there. And, um, and but they were like, well, I'll go together. We'll all check it out. There's a bunch of NBA players. And I was like, no way. Like there's just NBA players playing at a, at a park, you know, in LA. And so I drove down there by myself. Nobody ended up coming. I was the only person that showed up. So I was by myself. And I had brought my little point and shoot camera, kind of not professional camera, but not a great lens. Um, and I just sat in the crowd and I kind of just sat in the background and tried to take as best pictures as I could. And my first day at the Drew League, it was like <clears throat> James Harden, um, OJ Mayo, DeMar DeRozan, Nick Young, JaVale McGee. Like there's so many different players that at that time were like really pretty great in the NBA. So uh, I think from day one, I was hooked. And I was trying to figure out how can I get involved more. And one thing I did notice, there was no photographers at the Drew League. There was a couple of video guys. It was like Ball is Life, Hoop Mixtape. Um, but there was no photographers. And so I had reached out to the Drew League on Twitter. I said, hey, here's some pictures I got last week. Um, I would love to come back again. And they told me, you know, well, we can't pay you, but we'll save you a seat in the front row. And to me, like, that's all I wanted. I didn't want anything else. And I think that was like a big reason why I had a lot more access because a lot of photography at the time, sports photographers, they were hired by the league or by a, an outlet. And so if they're not getting paid, why are they going to spend eight, nine hours on the weekend taking free photos for something that didn't even make sense at the time? Um, there was no social media other than Facebook and Twitter. So Instagram hadn't even been a thing. So this was all just a very new thing. I think I was just so excited to be taking photos that I had already liked doing of my local guys, but to now be doing it with like these big, you know, superstar players. So it was, it was more of like my passion and love for basketball merging with photography at that time and just being very hungry. And like, I just want to take photos. Um, and that was just a really cool opportunity. So it was just kind of a it came out of nowhere, but it ended up like projecting or not projecting. It came out of nowhere, but it ended up just like taking my career and starting it off, really. And then how early into your career do you come up with the the watermark? Because the, the watermark, uh, to my knowledge, you were the first person I saw uh, doing that. And I remember it just kind of being this this moment on social where it would be like a, a NBA player would, would post one of your photos with your watermark. And I was like, who's this, you know, like I'd never seen that before. I was just like, who's this Cassie Athena? Like what, like who's this? And then um, mm -hmm. it, it really kind of took off from there where it, it almost became like, it was like, you know, our, our, like NBA players, it was like a, a badge of, of honor on social media to, to post one of your photos on their IG. And then you, you've now seen, of course, you know, other photographers have, have kind of, you know, made their own watermarks or kind of their own, branding on on social and whatnot but but you know again to my knowledge you're we the first person to do that so like how, how did you come up with that because i think that was really um i mean obviously you do great work but i think that little detail really took it to another level for you yeah i started doing that in in college actually um when it was just facebook and i would take pictures and i'd send them to the guys and i would put it in the bottom corner and unfortunately a lot of people didn't like watermarks they just crop it off and to me, I was just like, man, like I spent all my own hard money, like hard earned money on buying the camera, driving there, you know, taking photos, editing photos for free. Like the least I should get is credit. And so then I started trying to like experiment with like maybe put the watermark in the middle of the photo. And then people were like, oh, it's too much. And then, OK, maybe I'll put it next to your face. And, and so over the years, like my watermark would evolve. I would experiment a lot. 
Um, when it first started, it was like a straight line. It said photography. It had like plumeria flowers. <laughs> and then every year I would kind of make it a little more simplistic and and like not as obnoxious. I never wanted a watermark that was like obnoxious because at the time watermarks would be like all over photos. I wanted it to be very subtle because when I was studying art in college, you know, when when a, when an artist paints something, it's not worth anything until they sign it. So to me, I felt like this was almost my signature on my photo. But when an artist signs a photo, they're not like making it obnoxious to take away from the art. And there was some artists, I don't remember who, but like they would almost kind of like hide their signature somewhere within the artwork. And so to me, I felt like, how can I place my watermark in a way where it kind of flows with the photo so you can still know I shot it, but it's not taking away from the image. And so I had so much pushback, mainly from other photographers. They would all tell me this is ugly. Nobody's going to want to post your photos because of your watermark. And to me, I just felt like, it was my art, but also I needed to protect myself because the internet, you know, stuff is very easily like, you know, moved around and used without permission. So I felt like if I had my watermark, you know, and I'm pretty stubborn. So I feel like I'm just going to do it. I don't care if every photographer thinks it's ugly. The players weren't complaining, you know, like once I started getting to the Drew League and shooting NBA guys and then Aside from the Drew League, I started shooting guys outside of that. You know, Brandon Jennings took me under his wing. I was shooting him playing flag football games or his block party or, you know, like photo shoots. Paul George did a lot of stuff with me as well. So all those guys were not complaining. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep going. And then it started to become like, <clears throat> it started to become the same way you said, like, oh, who shot this? Oh, who's Cassie? Oh, I want a photo by her. And it started turning into this thing in the, especially the basketball world where people now want my watermark. Like I get paid now to keep my watermark on photos. So it's kind of full circle how it's all like turned into my brand. But I feel like at the beginning, I I wasn't really thinking of long term. I was just like, this is a cool idea and I'm just going to run with it. So you, you, you designed the watermark entirely on your own. You, you didn't have someone design that. No, I felt like one year I was going to hire somebody to do it. And then I just never did. Um, because people were saying I should put a logo. I shouldn't put like my actual like name. And I'm like, I don't, I can't think of a logo that's not going to be cheesy that could represent me. And so I just, I think it just happened. And, and every year I told you I would change my watermark. And then one year I put it on a business card and I gave my business card to somebody and they were like, oh, like I've seen your name before. I've seen this watermark. And then I was like, oh, people are starting to associate like this as my brand logo. So then I just stopped changing it at that point. And I mean, I, it, I didn't think it was going to be that is like the main thing, but it ended up working out. And I feel like it's a pretty strong design. But yeah, I did it myself. It's a custom font, everything. So <laughs> no, yeah, you, yeah. you crushed it. And, and now, you know, to your point, uh, I, I think it is a brand and it is what people associate you with. And, you know, players now, now you have merch and, and players, you know, that's another thing of, of players, you know, rocking t-shirts or, or hoodies and like uh, w w with the logo on it. So I, I think you you definitely crushed that. Um, I, one thing I, I wondered, you know, in retrospect now, if, if you wish you had the watermark on is the famous Nick Young meme, which <laughs> I think, I think, you know, you've probably talked about that uh, you know, story a lot. But um, for, for those who the, the select few who don't know, you created the Nick Young meme, which um, was actually from a video, which you, you mentioned doing more video earlier in your career. And, uh, you know, that, that was a, a video that uh, was on YouTube that you, you did with Nick, uh, you know, some behind the scenes stuff. So uh, wh when did that kind of take off that that moment? Um, because I, I believe that there's kind of a gap between when you did it and, and when it became, uh, you know, a meme or, or a gif, like, how did that kind of go viral? And uh, at this point, it's taken on such a life of its own that like, you know, anytime there's kind of a questionable comment or, or anything like that, you'll see that meme on, on Twitter uh, or, or Instagram or wherever. So like, uh, you know, that has probably been the most like viral thing, you know, that, that you've done, I would assume, just because that's such a, you know, universal, like, I feel like it's like a top 10 used, you know, GIF. So like, kind of walk us through uh, how that became what it is today. Yeah, so I, I had been shooting photos for about two years. So in 2013, I just realized I had this really cool opportunity um, having all this access to such cool NBA players. And I noticed at the time, like mainstream media was not covering the things that I was covering. 
Um, to the point where I had companies telling me like, nobody cares about what players are doing off the court. Nobody cares what they're wearing. And I was just like, okay, let me find a way to show it and put it on my own channel. So um, I had been very familiar with editing video, filming video. I went to school for a lot of that stuff. So I decided to start a web series and I called it Through the Lens. And I would follow NBA players for a day in their life. And I was just going to edit it and post it on YouTube and whatever happens, happens. So the first player I decided to reach out to was Nick Young. And um, I mean, Nick was the best person I could have thought of to start that with because he obviously has a great personality. Um, and then he just gave me all access. And so me and him linked up for the day. His assistant was there and uh, the three of us just like hung around L.A. And then at one point. Uh, he took us to his mom's house and then his mom is funnier than him. Like she's just got the greatest personality. And so she was just telling us childhood stories about Nick. And and then she mentioned this one story about how, you know, he ran into a player at a local park and how Nick was playing good, but how he needed to take the game more serious. But he was a clown back then. And when she said that and then it, it was like the fastest look ever. If you watch the actual video, it was just like really quick. But then when I started editing it, going back to my motion graphics, visual effects background, I was like, how can I add little funny graphics throughout the video? And so that one moment, I was like, I have to add question marks. And um, at the time, my partner that I was working with is uh, Jordan, who started Switch Cultures now. And me and him were sitting there and we were like, he was like, why do you keep obsessing? I'm like, I don't know. I have to put question marks. And it was taking me forever to figure out how to do it. And he was like, don't worry about it. I'm like, no, no, we got to do it. And then let it, you know, go on YouTube. And I think it probably took me a year to edit it and get it right, like the whole episode, because it was my first one. Then once I got uploaded, I think within a few months, um, I just remember going on Twitter one time and then I saw somebody post like, you know, a meme of that screenshot. And I was like, wait a second, like that's from my Nick Young meme. And then it just went viral. Like, I feel like the second I saw it, it was maybe like around April of 2014, I guess. And then by Christmas time, it was like everywhere. Like every single person was using it. Um, and then when people found out it was a video clip, then it like went viral all over again because now it was like fun that this moment that you love actually has a video as well. And that's why I don't have a watermark, like the Cassiatina watermark, because it has a through the lens watermark in the corner of the video. Mm -hmm. So people just cropped it off, which is a great example of why I don't like to do watermarks. Yeah, in the the watermark. but <laughs> yeah, but I would have never thought a video of all things would be the most viral thing I've shot. So, um, but I mean, for the most part, I feel like if you do your research, you can figure out I created it. And since then I've been able to, you know, talk about it and, and people know I do it. And, and Nick has been interviewed multiple times and he always gives me credit too. So it was a really cool moment, but I, I feel like a lot of people for at least two, three years are like, she created the Nick Young meme. And I'm like, I have so much more work I'm doing, but yeah, like that's my most viral, honestly. So I've embraced it. It's dope. It's, it's something you should be proud of. Um, what, what in your opinion is the, is the key to, connecting with players, right? And you, you mentioned Brandon Jennings, obviously, you know, Nick, um, I, I know you did some work with the game uh, earlier in your career. Uh, and, and just, you know, obviously, we, we see some of the players that you've been close with through the years, uh, you know, Aaron Gordon, etc. Like, what what's the key to earning a player's trust? And, and, you know, just, you know, earning that that connection that, um, you know, sometimes I, I think, hard for people to get right or or you know because I, I think there's a reason why you know maybe they do a, a one-off with a, a photographer but they go back to you you know multiple times or or you know prefer your work like what 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 is it about your interactions and, and just kind of developing that rapport that you think makes you unique i think like one of the biggest things and this is just life in general is being trustworthy and consistent. I think a lot of people take those things to be little or they take it for granted. Um, like if if I tell a player, if I take their photo, I say, I'm going to send it to you and I don't, that's already breaking their trust. So I've gotten to a point where if I tell, not even just a player, just people in my regular life as well, if I'm going to do something, I follow through with it. So I'm really big about like keeping my word and being consistent. So that all kind of naturally like transitioned when I started meeting NBA players because 
that was kind of already my character. And then when players would say, hey, can you, you know, come take photos? Or if I would ask them, can I come take photos? And then I would do it. I had to like have a turnaround and send them the photos because then it's like, wow, this is exciting. Like I invited her and I actually got it. Um, so I think that was like a big part. And then it also just years and years and years of proving that I am consistent and trustworthy. So, um, you know, that was a big part too. Like I wasn't, nobody wanted to hire me after that lockout year. Um, I couldn't work for the league. I couldn't work for teams. No media outlets wanted me. They said I wasn't a real photographer. And photography back then was much different than it even is today. You know, back then it was a small group of people that just worked for the outlets. Now there's a lot more flexibility with players bringing their own photographers or, you know, just more local photographers. But back then it was just like no shot. So I ended up, you know, that's when I met the game. I met him at the Drew League. And then the game would take me under his wing and he would take me to music video sets and we'd go to clubs and I would shoot all kinds of different kind of like entertainment content. And through that, I met so many photographers too that work with a lot of music artists because back then like music artists had photographers and videographers, athletes did not. So I learned a lot of kind of like the blueprint of how to deal with a major celebrity, how to deal with different personalities working with the game and all of the other like artists in the entertainment world. And then those photographers kind of teaching me how to, you know, how to be confident, how to get the group shots, how to do this and that. So all of that kind of translated back into like, hey, I kind of want to work more with the athletes uh, than in the music world, because the music world is very like, it's very inconsistent. They have wild hours, you know, um, basketball players, they have a little more of a schedule. So it's easier to go to a game and find somebody. Um, or find them doing a run in the summer. So I think like I definitely credit a lot to working with the game. And also he was very big on like, don't tell people you're my photographer. You're Cassie Athena and I'm your client. Because at the time everybody was like, oh, I can't work with you because you're the game's photographer. And you know, it was like this like territorial thing. And he was like, go work with whoever you want. Like, don't, don't let people put you in a box. So I think a lot of just like learning those different things from different people it also helped me with like navigating in the sports world and then also like building genuine friendships. I don't think, I think everybody wants to shoot athletes or celebrities and they know that. So it's like, what's going to make you stand out? Like you have to build a real connection with those people. Even how you just mentioned like Aaron Gordon, like I was just with his family for new year's. Like I hang out with his family more than I hang out with him. Like I love like making real friendships with these people and then also taking photos here and there. Um, but like my bigger priority is building a relationship and not just taking content. And I think that's kind of what shines through. And also starting when they're at a young age, like now everybody wants to take photos of high school players. But when I was shooting high school players, they were confused. Like, why, like, why are you sending us photos? You know? Um, and now those guys are NBA superstars. <laughs> like, but the guys now in high school, you you pull up to like a local game and there's 40 photographers there. So um, it's definitely shifted a lot. And I think people are trying to figure out the blueprint, but it's not so much about following the hype. It's like building relationships with people as they grow and then you can grow too. So w w which players are you closest with then? Uh, obviously Aaron, uh, but, but I guess, you know, through, through the years and, and then maybe like currently, like who, who are some of the guys that you're close with? Um, I would say, uh, right now, probably my closest friendship is Josh Richardson. Um, he's been a great person and just in general, like in life, uh, Stanley Johnson, I met him when he was in high school and, you know, as he got to the league, he really helped me with, you know, getting visibility at NBA games, bringing me to games, stuff like that when he was in Detroit, especially, um, Andre Drummond, I've done a lot of really cool stuff with him. Uh, yeah, Aaron Gordon, I'm like, I'm probably going to miss somebody. They're going to be mad, but over the years too, like, there's been relationships that I've gotten a lot of access. I've shot them. And then we kind of like, you know, people just evolve. A lot of people get in relationships, like people kind of just, you know, they're out of the spotlight a little more. Um, but I still, the cool thing is that I still always have access to them. And I know there's a lot of photographers now that have like access, but it seems to be like one player or a few players. Like I feel like I have access to hundreds and hundreds of players whenever I want. So, um, I'm cool with a lot of players, but as far as like really good friends, like I'd, I'd have to look at a list, but definitely I say like Josh, Stanley, Andre, like 
like those kind of guys, Aaron, you know, there's, there's other, there's younger, like Tyrese Maxey, I'm great with him. Like there's so many, you know, guys over the years, Paul George has been so helpful since the day I met him in 2011 till now. Uh, Reggie Jackson has been great. And then there's players like LeBron James where, you know, he's, he's posted my work. He's given me credit. Like he's helped my career. So even if it's like, whether I have a, a friendship with them or not, like there's still players that, that can help me with my career and help give me the visibility to keep going as well. Is there, you mentioned LeBron, is there a, a photo that, that he posted or that someone else posted that you, you noticed had a real impact on, um, I mean, again, and I guess like, you know, Nick in the beginning, like you know, in that moment, but like, what was there a photo that a player posted or, or a particular shot that you feel like kind of took you to a different level where like all of a sudden you got, you know, 10,000 more followers or like all these people kind of like hitting you up after that? Um, I feel like there's been a lot of moments like that. I think the first superstar that I really started getting close with and being able to shoot a lot of stuff was Steph Curry. Um, and it started with like Under Armour hired me to shoot like one event for him at his first All-Star weekend, you know, and then I ended up finding access to Team USA. And and so like as I would keep like running into these kind of guys, especially Steph, um, and then Steph started to grow too. So it was really kind of cool because as Steph was growing in his career, I was kind of like always there with a the camera. So, um, you know, like there was a time where it was like NBA All-Star weekend in L.A. And it was like Team Steph versus Team LeBron and like Steph let me follow him the whole weekend and uh, I just got like the coolest photos and it wasn't even so much of him posting it, but it was just him giving me the access to do it. Um, and then like for Le with LeBron, uh, there's like a, I'll, I'll try to sum up the story, but I flew to, to New York for fashion week with Victor Oladipo and I had got there really early and I hit up Chris Brickley and I had never been to one of his runs out there, but you know, he trains in New York and everything. And so I said, Hey, I'm in New York. Can I come to your gym today? And he was like, Oh, LeBron is going to be here. And I was like, Oh, cool. And I had shot LeBron maybe one time the year before at Rico's run. Uh, so like LeBron was like familiar with my work, but I've never actually met him. Um, and then, so when I went to, to Chris's gym, there was like 10 other photographers. There's a lot of people with like their iPhones and LeBron walks in his bodyguard shuts down everything, no cameras, no cell phones, nothing. And I'm like, wait a second, you know, like, and so I'm trying to like argue back and forth with the um, bodyguard, like, hey, I'm not some random photographer. And uh, he was like, I don't care. Like the answer is no. So he goes, you know, in the corner and he's standing in front of LeBron. I'm trying to talk to Chris. Chris is like, just leave it alone. And I'm like, no, like I'm not. So I walked over and I start kind of like going back and forth with the bodyguard, like in a respectful way, but like, hey, like I didn't, I didn't come here with the, you know, intent to just shoot LeBron. Like I came to shoot all these other guys. There was still like, you know, 20 other NBA players there. And LeBron saw me going back and forth with the bodyguard. And he just like stands up, walks over, gives me like a big hug, you know, and says, thanks for coming out and walks away. And I'm just like in my head, like, what just happened? Like, this is wild. And then, but on the outside, I got to remain calm, you know? And then, uh, and then the bodyguard was like, and I was like, we good? And he's like, we're good. So I was the only person allowed to shoot that run. And then I got this photo of like LeBron dunking and I posted everything on Instagram because I still didn't talk to LeBron. I just, whatever. So I posted the photos on Instagram. He screenshotted them, reposted them, and then gave me photo credit. And then I wasn't aware he was wearing like a Versace Kith shorts collaboration and it was fashion week and he was out there doing that. an event with his shoes. Yeah. So it just went super viral. I remember like Tom Brady was commenting, like all these superstars. So then every like media outlet picked it up and everybody who picked it up, all you see is like in the caption, you know, photo credit, Cassie being a photo. And like, I feel like that was, it was like already like more established in my career, but I feel like getting respect from somebody that, you know, is honestly one of the greatest players of all time. Um, to me, that felt like a really cool stamp of approval. Like, hey, like, not only did he give me permission to shoot, because he didn't have to do that, he made sure to give me photo credit. So moments like that, I feel like it it just makes everything worth it. To, and then since then, I've gotten cooler with him. He moved to L.A. I get to shoot his family a lot. So, you know, it's like I got to build a cool friendship with the whole family and also get credit. So I, I appreciate, like, I'm a huge fan of LeBron, like, 
you know, as a person and a player. So I definitely like love that kind of stuff. With, with the, you know, the, the rise of social media, I think everybody thinks they can be a photographer or videographer because it's just, you know, on your phone and, and you, you can post whatever. But uh, what's like an average day like for you? Maybe uh, shooting a game or, or shooting a run like, you know, Brickley's run or, or something out, uh, you know, out in L.A. Like what, what kind of what, what is the, the day, you know, a day in the life of Cassie Athena when, when she's shooting and just the hours that go into um, you know, actually being there and capturing all these moments and then coming back and editing the photos and putting in your watermark and, and then sending it to people and uploading it to social media. Like wh- how long does that process take? And um, you know, how, how, how much work goes into that versus, you know, the final product of people just see the photo with the watermark, but they don't realize maybe, you know, 10, 12, 16 hours went into that whole process. Exactly. Um, I definitely say the summer is my busiest time, but on like maybe a random day, uh, like over the summer, I remember like there's one day where I went to go shoot Steph and Steph works out really early. So I think he started at like 6 30, 7 a.m. And it was at a gym that was maybe like 35, 40 minutes from my house. So uh, during rush hour traffic. So, you know, I had to wake up super early, drive over an hour. I got there. I took photos for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And then then there's like the runs. So then whether it's the UCLA runs with Rico Hines or Drew Hanlon uh, or whoever is in L.A., then I would like drive another hour and a half to get to UCLA. Then I get there and then I'm taking photos for maybe two, three hours. And then it's another hour and a half to drive home, get home. And then now I've taken, you know, probably close, close to 2,500, 3,000 photos. Um, and then it's like, now I'm going through and I'm like, okay, I got to pick out the best ones. And it's just, that process might take, if I don't finish it that night, it's probably going to be a couple days. Um, and then once I go through it, pick out the best photos, and then I'm watermarking. So I watermark every photo individually because I don't have them all placed in one area. Usually to use like a program where I just batch watermarks, it only places it in the same area. And I want to place it like right next to their face. So I have like all these Photoshop actions set up where it's a little faster than just like copy paste. But still, I I basically like copy paste. I like put it where I want. And then I have like all these things to like save it and open the next photo. But it still can take me, you know, as many hours as I was shooting, it's like that many hours to get the photos out, if not more. Um, and then also between that, the next day I'm probably going and shooting another run because the runs are every day. So it's not even like I just have all day to edit. It's like, okay, I have tonight, I have to go to sleep because tomorrow I have to wake up to go shoot another, or there's an event or, you know, like one year Buddy Healed is like, hey, I want you to come to the Bahamas and shoot my camp. So now in the middle of all the stuff I'm doing, I'm flying to the Bahamas to go shoot a camp for a week. And then, you know, Bogdan Bogdanovic, like come to Serbia. And then I go to Serbia. Oh, and then I fly out to Serbia for a week and then I'm shooting out there. And then, you know, so there's like a lot of traveling and like other events in the middle of just the stuff that I'm shooting and I want to do anyway. So, so that's a lot. You constantly, you constantly working on something then basically like you're, you're, there's rarely a time you're not editing one project and it's kind of, you, you might be shooting the next one, but you're still, you know, you got multiple things you're working on at a time. Yeah. All the time. I feel like I could work on something every single day if I wanted, <laughs> even if I'm not shooting, even during the pandemic, I'm like, I have all these photos I haven't edited or, you know, whatever. So, or videos, I still shoot videos. I still shoot for my web series. I haven't posted as many videos because it's just a tough process, but I still film content. Cause I'm like, one day I'm going to find a way to get all of this out there. So yeah, even if I'm not, you know, physically out there doing something, I got plenty of work to do on my computer. What's it been like being a woman in an overwhelmingly male space? Cause I still think nowadays, if you look at like across the board, you know, whoever you would say are, are the, the top photographers, uh, you know, working in the NBA space, like th- there aren't many women and, uh, like what, what have been some of the challenges that you've had to face and uh, just kind of navigating that space as a woman? I think especially in the beginning, it was really tough 
because people just had really bad stereotypes about women being around athletes in general. Um, but I was also getting a lot more access to the players versus like maybe a groupie that's at a game trying to get their attention. I was like in the mix. I was in the middle of everything. So I feel like the first like three, four years of my career, if not more, were just proving that I was there for the right reasons. And that's just based off of me being a, a female. And like at times it would get very frustrating and and there was like certain brands and, and certain people that wanted me out of like certain spaces and they would use that against me and say, oh, this is the reason why players like her is this, you know? And so a lot of like negative rumors, a lot of bad stuff. And it was just like, it would upset me and frustrate me so much. And the one thing that I always did have though, is like the players always had my back. And like, that's why I'm very like pro, like I, like other women being able to work in the sports world, but also like not hating on men because a lot of men have helped me get to this place where I'm at. Like I, I wouldn't be here if those guys didn't help me get, you know, have the chance to do it. So, and now I feel like I'm in a better position where I can help other women and help people like enter this space and show them like, hey, like you can be here, you can shoot. Because so many people at the beginning told me like not to even try to do photography, like nobody would take me serious. Um, I've had people comment about the fact that I wear makeup when I go to games. Um, I'm always, I always feel like I dress very casual and, you know, I'm, I'm not like doing anything crazy, but still even as something as small as me doing like some lip gloss and eyeliner, it makes some guys feel the need to like comment on my appearance or try to say I'm not taking it serious. So I feel like a lot of that was hard to deal with. And then also I've had a lot of issues with like people thinking that I'm supposed to be there. Um, so when I have credentials and I've been credentialed to very big events and, and having security, like, you know, triple check me constantly um, being told I'm not allowed to be there. So I've had like a lot of issues with that. Um, but I feel like a big part of like my personality and my mom, you know, being an immigrant from Serbia, it's like, my family went through all of, even on my dad's side, they immigrated too from, from Europe. And I feel like a lot of that kind of like has been instilled in me. It's like, you're kind of like in a foreign space, but you belong here and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And I think just like me working really hard and just showing like my intentions, I wouldn't be around this industry for this long if I had bad intentions or if I wasn't serious about, you know, photography and I, at, I'm at a point now where I've made friends with all the girlfriends, all the wives, all the moms, like the family members. And so the players and their families love and accept me. So the outside noise doesn't really bother me at this point. Um, but it was definitely more of a challenge. But then it's also, I feel like it's more of an asset too, because I stand out a lot more. People, I feel like, remember me. Um, I think that it's easier for me to network with like sisters and girlfriends and wives because I am a female. So I have a lot cooler access that I feel like a lot of photographers don't get. I have a different perspective that a lot of people don't get. So there's definitely like pros and cons to it, but there's still like a lot of work that needs to be done with, with us just getting the respect to be in certain spaces. And I do look around a lot of times where I'm like, man, I wish I could shoot, you know, a game courtside or this and that. And you know, the, I've seen a lot more women enter the space, but it'd be cool to have even more. Um, but I think it just comes with a lot of the stereotypes that we're constantly fighting. Um, but everybody's got their own struggles. So I just look at it like a challenge instead of something that's going to stop me from continuing what I want to do. Well, one of the the recent things that, that you did that was really cool was shooting the Warriors at the White House. How, how did that come about? And uh, what was that experience like? Um, well, I was in Washington, D.C. shooting a boxing fight with Gervonta Davis. And so I was in D.C. anyway. And then um, I actually flew back to L.A. And then I checked my email and I got this email and it said it was from the White House. And they wanted to, it says the president invites you to come to the Warriors, you know, ceremony. I was like, I was just in D.C. Like, this has to be some <laughs> scam email. Like, I figured somebody knew I was out there and was trying to mess with me. Um, and the invitation, you had to like give your social security number. I'm like, this seems like a crazy scam. So I tried to like double check my facts as much as I could. And I'm like, it seems legit, you know? So I, I was just like, let's just take a chance. So I RSVP'd and I bought a ticket and I went back to DC a few days later. And, um, 
It was really cool because the Warriors were playing a game against the Wizards on Monday, which was Martin Luther King Day. And then on Tuesday was the White House. So I had no idea what to expect because I wasn't with the Warriors. I wasn't with the NBA. I was like invited by the White House. So there was a girl who had reached out to me from the White House and she is in charge of, you know, working with their brand partnerships and social media. And so she was the one, I guess, that knew who I was, invited me. And so me and her connected and um, they had to ask for like special approval so I could bring my camera in and take pictures. And um, it was just like the most surreal, like cool experience to to be invited to the White House of all places, um, but not as like a photographer for a team to be invited as a guest by the actual White House. So, um, you know, I got to go a bunch of layers of security. And then once I got in, um, there was a lot of people there that don't know the Warriors that maybe had connections to just be at the event. So because of that and me being really the only person with a camera that could like move around um, and then being friends with Steph and Draymond and all the wives and everything, I was able to, I feel like I was able to capture the coolest moments, even though I wasn't necessarily like the photographer for the day. But I think I got like more access than anybody because I was able to like go back to having that trust from everybody and and people knowing I was going to take some really cool photos. So to me, that was one of the coolest experiences, like I went to the White House on a field trip when I was younger and now like being invited as a guest, like that was a really cool thing. And and I hope to, you know, be able to go back again there one day. So, yeah, I, I loved it. It was just really random, but I was really glad to be there. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were invited separately like that. That's by like them. Like, no, that that's awesome. I, th I think that that just shows kind of, you know, everything that you've been doing, um, you know, even if you don't get it from the NBA or, or the Warriors in that you know, sense like that. You got it from the White House. That's that's even cooler in, in my book. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, I, I guess we, we mentioned like, you know, the, the Nick Young moment and um, LeBron and, 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 you know, different different players and, 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 you know, events you've shot. But did you have an I made it moment in your career? Because uh, I, I remember uh, I was working at ESPN at the time uh, and, and you were on the jump and, and I, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but like, I guess, is, was there a moment in your career that you were like, okay, I've arrived, like I, I've made it, or are, are you, you know, you don't have that mindset maybe and you're constantly just like, you know, I, I got to just keep going or like, how, how do you view kind of the, the concept of success and, uh, you know, you kind of making it quote unquote? I think that's, I feel like that's like, a, I don't want to say an issue, but it's like an issue and a gift that a lot of us have that are very like, you know, entrepreneurs and we have goals and all that is like, there's never really a moment of I've made it because it's always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? So um, I feel like throughout my career, there's probably been a lot of those moments. But for me, I just feel like once I hit a goal, it's like, what's my next goal? So it's kind of been like, that's kind of been the theme. That's probably why like we're over here, like doing a podcast, you know, in our free time and working and doing stuff. It's because it's like, it just doesn't even feel like work. It's just constantly like trying to be creative and express ourselves. So I would say, um, I don't know. I, I have to think, I mean, I, I feel like the Nick Young meme went viral early on in my career and seeing how the feedback was, I feel like that was like a first moment of, of people like kind of showing me like my work is impactful and it's being seen by people all over the planet. Uh, I got to go to China. Again, the Warriors were there. I'm always with the Warriors somehow, but not with them. But so, so I was not, in not China. Not a bad team to be with. <laughs> no, it was great. Like I love being around them. Um, so I was in China, and the Warriors were out there playing the Timberwolves. And I remember I was outside of the hotel, and like they were all waiting for Steph Curry to come out. Um, and then like I looked over, and there was a fan, and they had like a Nick Young meme confused shirt. And like Nick was, cause Nick was on the Warriors and Nick was coming out and I was like, where did you get that shirt? Like, wait a second. <laughs> but, um, but at the same time I was like, wow, there's people all over the planet. Like I, it's, and it's not so much just the meme in general. It's just knowing that your work that you do in LA or whatever city you're in can be so global and people that you won't even, you know, realize that you're like touching them and being able to show like your work to the whole world. So, um, I think that that part, like those kind of moments make it really cool. Of course, anything I get to shoot with like Steph Curry or LeBron James or people of like that caliber is always like a surreal experience because 
like they're the biggest superstars on the planet and they're the most amazing people that I've gotten to be around. So I think a lot of it was probably more stiff, I think, in the beginning, because like shooting him at like Toronto All-Star Weekend and we're on a helicopter and there's a blizzard and, you know, kind of just shooting all these cool moments. I'm like, OK, like I think I've made it. You know, I'm I'm doing some I got to introduce them to my family. Being on the jump was huge, too. Like and that was so cool that you got to come down there and hang out. And I was so nervous. And and I think it was it was cool because it's like, wow, now I'm like on a huge television show, like nationally aired live. And a lot of people like saw it. So there, there's always moments like that. Um, and I just feel like I embrace it. I love it. And then I'm like, OK, like, what's the next thing I could do? Uh, but not even in like an ungrateful way. And just like I'm like now I'm more hungry for like, you know, to keep going. So, yeah, I would say there's a there's a few moments, but definitely like those kind of guys. Um, and then also I got to give credit to Brandon Jennings because that was like one of my favorite players. Like I loved him watching him play when he was in high school and going overseas and and then getting to work with him like he he would like hire me for photo shoots. Like he's very creative. Like he really like inspired me to keep doing photography and being creative while also giving me access to his life and him being such a big player. Um, you know, I remember he came to my house uh, to do a photo shoot and he paid me and I was just like, wow, like I was like, so this is cool. Like now I, like, that was one of my I made it moments, like a player that I really look up to is paying me for my work. And we got some really cool photos that day. And, and I think that like those kind of moments just make it all worth it. Do you have a dream person you'd like to shoot? Um, I feel like at this point I might have shot everybody that like <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's like a dream person to shoot because also at the same time, I like I don't want to just take a photo, like I want to get to know them and get like cool, like personal photos. So I just don't know what or people's a dream, per a dream person you want to connect with that maybe you, you haven't connected with yet. Um, I feel like when I was in Washington, D.C., I saw J. Cole at a game. He actually sat behind me, which was kind of strange because we were like 12 rows up and he was just in the crowd behind me. Um, but I feel like he was one person that I've always like been a fan of and would love to work with or like Kendrick Lamar, like a lot, I think a, a few more like music artists or actors. Um, I think I would be curious to like kind of get to know and shoot that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as like basketball players, I feel like at this point I've probably shot pretty much everybody that I've wanted to. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have like one specific person. <laughs> uh, lo looking back, what is one piece of advice you'd give to an aspiring photographer coming up in uh, 2023? Well, it's, it's also tough now because 2023 is a whole different world than when I started. But I would say like the main thing is to is to have like a good attitude and to be consistent and to fall in love with photography. Cause I think, I think I've seen a lot of problems with photographers over the year that have come and gone is they get so caught up in trying to shoot the people that have the most followers or who can get them the most attention or who's the most popular instead of trying to like actually enjoy editing and taking photos and, and like the grind, like the process part of it. Cause it's always exciting when, you know, you post a photo and you're, it goes viral and people love it. But like what process it takes to get to that point of even posting the photo. I think a lot of people don't realize how much work is involved behind the scenes, um, even like how you were touching on earlier about it. So I think I think that's the biggest part is like really falling in love with it and find like what makes you unique. Like don't try to just copy every other photographer um, like find your own style and that's going to make you stand out more. So being a good person, networking, relationships are everything. I mean, I would never make it to this point in my career if it wasn't for other people that have like reached out their hand and helped me and and vice versa, you know. So um, relationships are huge. Uh, and then yeah, I feel like photography is like the smallest part of what I do. Like the biggest thing is like networking and being places and talking to people and and making them feel good. And and so I think that's a big part of it. It, it. There's a lot. And so I say all those things at one, if that's too much, I don't know. But yeah, no. I think that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure people can, can use all that advice. Uh, what What is Cassie doing in 2026? Who I don't know. So 
when people used to ask me that question when I was in college, my dream plans were to work at a visual effects studio as a producer, you know? So I feel like at this point, I try not to look too far ahead because, and then also the pandemic happened, you know? So it's like, you just kind of never know what life is going to throw your way. And um, I try not to plan too far ahead and just kind of like, maybe like a few months at a time and see what happens. And I feel like God is going to take me in the direction I'm supposed to go and where I'm supposed to be at. Um, but I hope in 2026 that I'm still doing what I love at a way bigger level. And um, I would love to be able to to set up ways for to help other photographers that are coming up and, and, and help other people find their own voice like creatively and, and continue helping athletes and other creatives. So I just want to keep doing what I love forever. I think that's the perfect place to wrap. Uh, anything you want to plug? Where, where can people find you? uh find you on social and then also uh get your merch if if they want some yeah uh my social media i have two instagrams my photo page is cassie athena photo my personal page is cassie athena everything else twitter uh facebook all that stuff is just cassie athena uh tiktok and then i'm gonna start posting more on youtube so follow me there that's also cassie athena and then for my clothing uh, it's Wear Athena. So at Wear Athena on Instagram, wearathena.com. I have actually new clothing that's going to be dropping very soon. I'm going to be doing oh. more designs, more collabs, more more stuff. I'm going to start really diving into all these other projects. So just follow me and, and stay tuned. <laughs>